This guy made Fallout New Vegas look like it was vomited on by a bunch of visual effects. Oh look, this one too, and this one, and this one as well, and literally every graphical overhaul video on YouTube for Fallout New Vegas is the same. The end result is always overly saturated or blinding with contrast. You probably clicked on this video thinking you were gonna get a list of mods in the same vein, but I gotta tell you head on, this isn't gonna be your typical graphical overhaul. What I'm gonna do with the mods in this video is add onto the graphical style of New Vegas without taking away from it. What that means is that essentially, the game wouldn't look that much different from how it already does, but the aesthetic quality will be noticeably enhanced. You'll see what I mean once we start right now. First things first, what do we see when we boot up the game? A bunch of loading screens and the main menu, which looks so damn old, they make me want to cough because of all the dust they've collected. All the images are low in quality and blurry. Let's grab all-in-one interface upscale, and we're gonna need a truly HD main menu and loading screens on top of it, which is hands down the most aesthetically pleasing loading screen upscale mod. But now to match this quality, we're gonna need a main and pause menus overhaul. This mod will enhance the visual aspects of the main and pause menus, which you can now fully customize. For example, changing the logo to match whatever mod list you're rocking. But the mod also adds a bunch of new features and options to the pause menu, like a quest log, an XP gauge, a death counter, a caps counter, and a few other things like a real-time clock. So now you'll know when to take your 10 minute breaks for each hour of gaming. It includes some new HUD features as well, like being able to fully customize its color using RGB slides and an animated bottle caps counter. Let's move on. What's the next thing we do? We start a new game. Most likely because you get bored of your old character build like 10 hours in and want to create a fresh new character. Then you get hit with the introductory video scene for the game, but it's lacking in frames and quality. So we need the game intro AI upscaled to high definition 60 frames per second. The video is noticeably better with the mod and a lot smoother, but don't expect a massive upgrade in quality. After you skip the intro, even though we've just improved it, you'll wake up from a coma and the first thing you'll see is an NPC, the iconic Doc Mitchell. He's already such a beautiful man, but with a few mods, we can make him and other iconic NPCs even more gorgeous. Hall of Face upscales face, hair, and eye textures, and sprinkles a tiny bit more detail over them. Improved Vanilla Male Body is a high poly and very high quality overhaul of the men's bodies that'll also get rid of all the seams at the neck and wrist areas. With Character Kit Remakes Hair and Teeth, we'll enhance the teeth models and textures, and completely recreate all vanilla hairstyles in a more modern vein while staying true to vanilla vanilla designs as well as add a few new hairstyles. And lastly, we need a full vanilla eye retexture because the eyes are the windows to the soul. This combo of mods will bring the characters to life without changing their recognizable facial structure. There are many mods that overhaul the NPCs and their faces, but we've become too familiar with the characters in this game that I honestly believe changing their facial features would do more harm than good, especially since we're trying to keep things as vanilla as possible. However, if they're still too ugly for you, you can use Character Kit Remake instead of Hall of Face, which recreates human character assets in their entirety without explicitly changing any of the NPCs' faces. Either way, Trudy is a total hotty now. Feeling thirsty? I can take care of that. But this mod will need patches for others that add new NPCs like companion mods, for example. Now, whilst Doc Mitchell saying the lines you've heard hundreds of times before, your eyes wander around and you catch a glance of a bunch of things in need of a visual upgrade. First, his clothing. It's important we enhance the aesthetic quality and detail of all outfits in the game with Monin's upscaled vanilla armor textures and Chillo Kicks HD clothing retextures. Because New Vegas being an RPG game means you'll be interacting with many NPCs, all of which are dressed in a piece of armor or another, and your character will be on screen 24-7 if you're in third person, hopefully clothed, and even in first person your gloves will be visible too. Doc Mitchell's still talking, blah blah blah, and the second thing you'll notice is how things look on the inside of his house. In other words, we gotta enhance the interiors of New Vegas. We'll need to grab five mods. First, NMC's texture pack for New Vegas will enhance the visual appearance of interior tile sets without changing them too much, as well as retexture many clutter objects that reside within interiors. I know it retextures 90% of everything in the game but don't worry about it, I'll address that later. For now, go into the mods folder and delete those files. On top of NMC's pack, let's install Ojo Bueno Texture Pack. It'll touch on a lot of things that NMC's pack does not. Head into the mods folder and delete these files. Haven't you noticed how some buildings will have windows on the outside, but on the inside those same windows wouldn't exist where they should. Windows of the Mojave will take care of this inconsistency, plaguing some of the buildings in the game, in turn adding to the overall atmosphere of these interiors. Speaking of atmosphere, atmospheric lighting tweaks fiddles with image spaces and light 
lighting templates to achieve a more effective ambience across all the interiors in the game. The lighting with this mod really complements the texture changes we've made to interior objects. And to complement the lighting changes, let's use Lumen Ambient Lighting. This mod will make objects that appear to emit light actually light up the area around them. It's incredible how much better the game looks when all we've done is make a few lighting changes. You'll see a lot of this during this video. You create your courier and then Doc Mitchell asks to examine your penis. No, that's just my Doc Mitchell. Uh, anyway, at this point you'll be able to see your HUD and allocate your special and skill points. The user interface is low in quality and it's very apparent if you pay attention to the icons. That's why we should use Vanilla UI+, Plus, which greatly improves the user interface without compromising the original style. We also need its UI scaling feature to be able to use the consistent Pip-Boy icons collection. This handful of mods will enhance and in some cases completely overhaul the icons in the game. From messages all the way to map markers, we should also grab high resolution screens to up the render resolution of the in-game screens like terminals, the Pip-Boy, or the Reflectron. Right before you leave the Doc's house, he hands you a very ugly Pip-Boy 3000 from Fallout 3. Ugh. It's not just low quality, but it also doesn't fit the aesthetic style of New Vegas. So instead, we'll use the Molten Clouds Pip-Boy 2000. It's much more fitting and higher in quality. Now it's finally time to go outside into the wasteland for the first time, for the thousandth time. After the sunlight burns your eyeballs and your vision is restored, it'll come to your attention that the landscape isn't vanilla. So we must restore the vanilla landscape, but it would still be low quality. What's the solution? The only mod I could find that enhances the quality of vanilla textures was Charge's FNV HD Texture Pack. Grab only the landscape and architecture files from the mod, unless you'd rather not use the NMC or Ojo packs, and instead want to upscale the vanilla clutter and interior textures. Grab the separate files. Why not the all-in-one? Because the file sizes are simply way too big for us to use them at all in MO2. For the purposes of this video, I'm showcasing the 4K textures, but the difference between 2K and 4K is barely noticeable in action. So I recommend the 2K packs. Let's also get landscape texture improvements to patch up seams in the ground textures, and a more consistent vanilla rock texture to remove the green tint from canyon rubble to match the color of cliff tops in the game. The second biggest thing within your peripheral vision is the sky, the clouds, and the dreaded yellow filter of New Vegas. If you like the yellow tint of the game, then you can skip the mods I'm about to use, but you'll be missing out on the most crucial aspect of enhancing the game's visuals, and that is lighting. Or you could turn on the Windows Nightlight feature and turn it up to 50%. First, Yellow Goodbye will reduce the yellow tint with the goal of keeping the game looking as vanilla as possible in the process. Unlike other mods that try and do the same thing and end up oversaturating the game's colors. Over top of Yellow Goodbye, we'll also need General Lighting Overhaul. This is a fully configurable, scripted, and compatible lighting overhaul mod that we're using to brighten the daylight and darken nighttime. It sounds like a small change, but trust me on this, I have no idea why, but this mod is a game changer. It makes the Mojave look so much more impressive visually when slapped on top of everything else in this mod list. Now, let's turn our focus to the sky. Cloud Upgrade NVSE adds pseudo animated clouds for horizons and panoramic cloud systems. Then we'll use elegant sun glare retexture for a more visually appealing sun. But no matter how elegant the sun textures are, you're in the Mojave, where the heat is hot and the ground is dry. So let's grab Heat Haze, which emulates a mirage for distant objects that'll appear to shimmer in hot weather. But now, to shield us from the desert heat, it doesn't hurt to also use Cloud Shadows, which simulates what happens when a cloud blocks sunlight, casting a shadow over its surroundings. Going forth, the next thing I do personally is equip my courier with some classic drip. There are a couple of mods that have become a staple in my load order. Classic Vault 13 Jumpsuit and Neo Classic Armored Vault 13 Jumpsuit. This combo has me never taking off this piece of clothing. After that, if you catch him in time, the first NPC you'll meet on the outside is Victor, and he's a Securitron. Howdy, partner! Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? To drastically enhance those unique robots visually, let's grab the Fright Turkey's Creature Pack. And a little bonus, let's also grab both Securitrons in CRT and Cowboy Victor. After speaking to Victor, you head up to the Good Spring Cemetery looking for clues, and you'll get a clear view of Vegas, or more specifically the Lucky 38 from a distance. This is where you notice one of the biggest problems in Fallout games, and that is the Distant Level of Detail, or LOD. Simply put, it sucks. Now if you have the knowledge, you could generate your own distant LOD textures, but since we're keeping things vanilla, I'll save you the hassle by recommending you use vanilla generated LOD and improved LOD noise texture. With this change, not only will the LOD look way better, but you'll be able to see locations from a much greater distance. This is crucial in open world games. It fills you with curiosity and encourages exploration. Plus, distant landmarks serve as navigational aid. Not that we need it. There's another way we could take care of the distant LOD problem, and that is by hiding it, using dusty distance redone. This mod will add distant fog to obscure your vision of far 
faraway objects. Moving along, you'll head into the prospector saloon and start the tutorial where you'll get your hands on your first gun. Out of all the weapon retexture mods, the only one that preserves their vanilla aesthetic is from Charge's FNV HD texture pack. Let's take the varmint rifle on a test run, hunting geckos with sunny smiles. This is the first time we'll encounter a non-human NPC, so let's up the visual fidelity of all creatures with Creatures HD. After you've spilled the blood of your enemies, you'll realize blood textures are very low quality. That can sometimes suck the joy out of killing things. So, let's remaster the vanilla blood textures. Upon installation, choose the bright 1k option. Then, you go on back to the saloon. Yeah, I'm better. Done being nice. Smart Kill Joe Cobb, speak to Trudy about Ringo as Joe Cobb's corpse rots in the background, and head up to the gas station where Ringo challenges you to a game of caravan. And that's when you realize, you need an HD playing cards remaster. Cards are now visually appealing, but unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about the playing table. After you beat Ringo and take his money, you suck him dry of all of it by becoming his mercenary. Ghost Town gunfight starts, boom boom boom, and you hit the road and you're on your way to Prim. It is here you'll meet your very first Protectron, Robots HD will upscale the game's robot creatures. When your business at Prim is done, you continue onwards toward your journey to the Strip. Along the way, you'll happen by some ugly dust storms. Dust Storm Deluxe will fix this eyesore and smoothen the dust effects. Now let's skip ahead and fast forward all the way to Vegas. Freeside and the Strip are the two locations that have the fans of the game disappointed the most. It's supposed to be this massive city untouched by nuclear warheads, but it doesn't look like it in the vanilla game. And we're keeping it this way. What did you think I was gonna do? Install a broken mod to make the game unstable? Or use a cluttered, seizure-inducing mod to overhaul the strip? I gotta admit, this looks pretty cool. I'm not doing any of the above, but what I will do is make the strip look way better come nighttime. First, let's install Afterglow. This mod adds ambient lighting to all the neon signs in the game. Next, strip lighting overhaul makes a lot of the lights in the strip actually produce or emit lighting when they previously did not. The Lucky 38 is this monument you'll constantly have in your view throughout your journeys across the Mojave Wasteland. Yet, in person, it looks pretty damn awesome. And we're gonna make it even more awesome with Lucky 38 lights redone. Enough about this trip. Let's slightly enhance Freeside with simple Freeside overhaul. It adds slightly more detail to Freeside as a whole by attaching various clutter objects to buildings. And to enhance the lighting in Freeside, or really all over the Mojave, a little more lamplight will fix and light up many of the vanilla game's light sources. Finally, the previously mentioned general lighting overhaul will make the strip and Freeside much more atmospheric at night. It makes all the lighting changes we've made stand out more. If you feel that nights are too dark, you could always fix that in these settings. And to further enhance the night sky, get Moonlight and VSE and Mojave Nights. I'll now mention mods to enhance some of the visuals related to the DLCs. Glowing ghosts will have the holograms in Dead Money emit ambient light. This change alone can upgrade the visual fidelity of all the interiors housing a few holograms. 3D rain drastically enhances the rain's textures by changing them from 2D particles to 3D meshes instead. It'll also add a neat mist effect as a bonus. As for Old World Blues, we could grab its vanilla pre-generated LOD. If you're wondering what animation on Gunplay mods I'm using, then you must have not seen the previous episode in the series where I enhanced the gunplay in a vanilla friendly way. YouTube. YouTube never changes. Smash like and subscribe. Here's a quick showcase of a few mods that you may want to grab to enhance the visuals even further. Better grass makes grass swing with the wind more and enables vertex lighting. The weather casino tables option from playing cards HD retexture will bring the casino tables up much higher in quality. I now enjoy blackjack a lot more. Strip palm trees places a few palm trees dressed in LED lights from the top's courtyard onto the sidewalk of the strip. Prior to using this mod, the streets of the strip just felt a little too empty. 